On the Tibetan plateau, prayer flags flutter in the cold wind from the Himalayas as a woman worships at the holy mountain outside her village. Her name is Droma, and she is praying for the health of her elderly parents. She and her sister are their parents' only caretakers, and the young women support themselves and their parents with the help of two yaks that they bought with a loan from Heifer International. When the harsh winter weather finally abates, the villagers take all their yaks to the lush summer grazing grounds. What you're looking at are pictures from Sharon's advanced magnetic resonance imager, a machine with considerable advantages over standard MRIs. In seconds, the radex reader can zero in on one image among thousands. MRI of the head. Sharon Hospital has five complete operating rooms. You're watching Dr. Joseph Hayek performing arthroscopic knee surgery. Joe Hayek came to Sharon from Harvard Medical School, and he's been with the hospital for well over 20 years, as are most of Sharon Hospital's physicians. He's board certified in his specialty. There aren't many hospitals anywhere, much less in a rural setting, that can make that claim. Sharon is a sophisticated but highly personal hospital. This extended family of healthcare practitioners work together to assure the best in care. Nothing gets lost in the maze of a big city bureaucracy. Lab results, 15 minutes. A consultation between several specialists, right now. Rehabilitation, testing, counseling, just down the hall. Jazz is a universal language, and we'll be speaking the language of jazz, which will be understood by the people. I definitely think we're carrying a message, and that message is, uh, uh, from my own concept, that message is one of peace, love, and understanding. One thing I would, would uh, say about this, this band is that it's one of the best combination of musicians and personalities that I could think of being with. And I, I just think it's gonna be very exciting. Playing in Europe man, is, is the most exciting thing in the world. Yeah, I've been playing in Europe maybe 20 years. Every time it's exciting going over there. It's very important for us to play over there, you know. And the, the gentlemen before us, you know, the players before us, you know, like Illinois Jackhead, you know, the older players, you know, they upset, you know, the path for us. I, as an individual, think of music more as a healing force. The audience should be more aware of the power that music has and the vibrations that it has. I know many times people can come to hear uh, someone like Milt Jackson or someone like Jimmy Smith, and they'll be angry and depressed, and then they'll go out feeling good. And that's what I like to think of music as. <laughs> The message of the music that we play is a celebration of life in a joyful way. It's a positive thing. It's meant to bring people together, not pull them apart. That's the great thing about jazz, and especially this kind of jazz, because it's, it's a happy thing. It's about swinging, it's about being honest, and it's about being as earthy as you can be as a person.
every single one of us can make a difference in this world we all share. With our dollars, we can all help the less fortunate in the developing world. For nearly half a century, Global Impact, formerly International Service Agencies, has represented 50 of the most effective international relief agencies, helping to ensure that their money goes where it is most needed. Artist Rafael Ferrer was born in Puerto Rico in 1933. He now lives part of the time here in the Dominican Republic. Somehow the visual richness of this particular area of the Dominican Republic has been singularly important in stimulating my desire to spend time here. Ferrer and his wife, Francoise, live half a year in the Dominican Republic, where he finds inspiration quite different than he does in Philadelphia, their other home. Yet it isn't the obvious imagery of the tropics that motivates him. This whole idea that art is done for the people, for the welfare of mankind, or for a revolutionary situation is extremely stupid. Art is done by individuals who primarily have to satisfy their internal needs. Ferrer was first a musician, a successful New York jazz drummer. But he knew that painting would give him more control of his life. My work always has a rough quality to it that is exciting to me. I believe the artist works for himself. If he can't satisfy himself, and he does things in the hope that he's going to be successful, there's absolutely certainty that he's going to fail. Philadelphia is the opposite pole of Ferrer's planet. Here, working amid the concerns of a North American city, much of his work still inevitably springs from the tropics. His canvases have a life of their own, a life that defies categorization as Hispanic or Caribbean, or any of the synthetic, restrictive generalizations that Ferrer despises. To Ferrer, macho is a catch-all, into which too many people sweep the elements of Latin American culture that they find intimidating. He has been criticized for painting startlingly specific nudes, erotic canvases that some interpret as macho pandering. I don't respond to these problems in any way that I can make sense because I am not a part of them. They are the end result of the liberal tradition now gone totally haywire, where men are being feminized, women are being masculinized, everybody is being homogenized to the point that there is this mishmash, this confusion, and what I see all around me is total unhappiness. Art, as they say in the cliché, is eternal. The Spanish painters are the most important painters. The depth of someone like Velázquez is something that challenges the words. I don't know another painting better than Las Meninas, embracing so many different problems, psychological, visual, compositional. Goya is, to me, a contemporary. Goya, Velázquez, Gauguin, Matisse, Picasso. These people are all alive. Someone may have buried them, but they are not buried in any way in terms of the energy that they came to produce in this world and this planet and that they have left behind. And that, I think that is the most thrilling thing to understand. And it's the one thing that definitely makes my day every day because if I were to think about the people that are so-called, quote, alive, I would want to definitely be dead. Can the actions of one person initiate worldwide changes for good or ill? Not in isolation, but repeated again and again, over and over, of course they can. Whether the effect damages our planet or repairs it. We're going to show you how this happens and why, and how, with a little help, ordinary people can ensure that these changes are all for the better. A 
Amid the deserts of Peru live some of the world's poorest people. For them, life is an exercise in futility. These people can't afford to live anywhere but among the dunes, eking out a living as best they can. But it is hard. So hard that they have named their village Mala Vida, bad life. Thank you.